Hello, my name is Nicole Wagner and I hail from Georgetown University in Washington, DC. Today, I will talk to you about my work surrounding the evolutionary history of conical stromatolites. As seen in this table of contents, I will walk through the different parts of my work in order they were done. First, an introduction to the lake and the stromatolites. Uh, stromatolites may be Earth's oldest macroscopic fossils. Conical stromatolites form in the absence of sedimentation and are therefore considered to be pretty robust um, records of biophysical activity. On the image on the left, you can see these fossilized stromatolites present in Western Australia. The image on the right is an actual photograph of modern day actively growing stromatolites found on the benthic surface of Antarctic Lake Untersea. Uh, the shape and structure of the cones uh, suggest that they can be a modern analog for growth of some of the oldest fossilized stromatolites. Currently, the mechanisms that underlie the formation of these structures are not fully understood. But given that they are very different from the mats around them uh, uh, that live in the same conditions, we can hypothesize that microbial behavior and composition are responsible for the morphology and structure of these mats. The more detailed understanding of the mechanisms of extant actively growing structures that we can obtain, the better we can interpret the analog, uh, analogous fossils, fossilized structures in terms of microbial interactions and ecology, which can in turn provide an insight into uh, ancient microbial ecology. And uh, this study, uh, my study site is Lake Untersea, which is located in Queen Motland, Eastern Antarctica. The lake contains an an aerobic and an anoxic basin, and the stromatolites were obtained during a dive from the aerobic basin um, at around 13 meters where there is still light. The top right figure is another picture of the bottom of the lake, and here you can see the morphology of different mats in the same location. You can see the pinnacle mats that are growing between them. The samples that I am studying were collected in the fall of 2019. Onwards to the methods. Studying the community composition of the stromatolites separate from the water is important. One way to exclude any exogenous DNA is to not use the very short reads. eDNA can come from lysed cells in the water column above the mats. Another great benefit to long reads is that they make it easier to extract the original individual genomes from the metagenome, known coincidentally as MAGs or metagenome assembled genomes. Communities in these extreme Antarctic environments have microbes that are not known to us and are currently absent from major databases. Rebuilding the original genomes not only leads to new discoveries, which improve our understanding of individual life in these biomats, but also expands our literal database of life. For uh, my samples, in order to separate the organisms within the cells from what is outside, it's important to lyse the cells as gently as possible. This is difficult since they are trapped in a sturdy biofilm that needs to be broken up first. Uh, while bead beating would yield somewhat higher yields, it will also shred the DNA and a gentle lysis uh, that would disturb the strands as uh, little as possible is much preferable. And the lysis method for these samples is very long and takes almost 24 hours. There was an eight hour incubation with thermolabile proteinase K, which was followed by an overnight treatment of metapolyzyme, which is a cocktail of several lysing enzymes. Finally, I did a phenylchloroform purification of the DNA before sequencing. After the extraction was complete, I used the ligation 1D kit for sequencing, and the sequencing happened over 72 hours along with base calling. For the initial round of analysis, I used the Epitome 16S workflow for an initial look at the microbial community, 
and ours ggplot library for further analysis. And now uh, the results. To learn more about the microbial community in uh, the morphology, uh, the role of the microbial community in the morphology, I compare the composition of the two mats that uh, grow side by side at the bottom of this lake. The conical mats, um, that, as we discussed, are rare and have only been found in this lake to our knowledge. And the pinnacle mats on the right are actually quite common and have been found in many other polar, polar lakes. Morphological differences can be seen clearly. Uh, one is conical and can be grown to a height of half a meter, while the other, uh, known as pinnacle mats, are cuspid shaped and are no taller than 10 centimeters. The uh, pinnacle mats were collected uh, that were collected were growing in between the conical uh, stromatolites. Currently, I've started testing the hypothesis that community structure and function are responsible for the morphology by looking at the community differences between the conical mats and the pinnacle mats. Here you can see uh, the trees generated using the Epitome 16S workflow. From these trees, uh, we can see that there is more diversity in the phyla uh, at, in the conical stromatolites than the pinnacle mats. And to reiterate, the hypothesis is that the different communities lead to different structures. And to test this, I need to be able to look at abundances of each of these phyla in addition to the diversity of the community. So in the previous slide, uh, we saw that there is more diversity in the conical mats at first glance. But comparing the abundances of these phyla between the samples also provides important information about the community differences. I did an initial normalization of the number of reads before using the ggplot2 library on the epitome output to make the plot you can see. Well, uh, uh, while uh, the diversity can be seen to be greater in the conical stromatolites, the abundances of the dominant phyla are more or less similar in the two mats. The uh, dominant, uh, dominant or more, most dominant, most abundant phyla seen here are the proteobacteria, the cyanobacteria, uh, the bacteroidetes, uh, and the actinobacteria, with bacteroidetes being the only one with a greater normalized abundance in the pinnacle mats. Uh, given that some studies of ancient stromatolites pointed to cyanobacteria being a player, I decided to uh, look at uh, families within this phylum. And while there is still more diversity in the conical stromatolites, there doesn't seem to be a very visible, at first sight, uh, difference in abundance of the more dominant cyanobacteria. Taking a closer look at proteobacteria, uh, which were the most abundant of the phyla present in both samples, we saw a surprising similarity and abundances between the communities at a uh, class level. Uh, while those are our current results, there is so much more left to do in this project. And the current results, while there is a difference in diversity, they don't fully support the hypothesis that a clear difference in community composition could be responsible for the difference in morphology. But this is just the initial metagenomic analysis, and fortunately, there is so much more we can and will do. The next steps in this project are a complete functional analysis of the metagenomic data. While taxonomic composition is a first step in the hypothesis, uh, how the mats are shaped can be answered in much more detail when the metabolic and other functional potentials has been uncovered. They may be similar phyla, but they're not necessarily carrying out identical activities. Even more fascinating than metagenomics is metatranscriptomics, RNA-seq obtained using a minion, which uh, will tell us what could actually be happening at these communities, not just what the potential is. And building on that, metaproteomic analysis can even provide a better 
prospect of what the community is succeeding in accomplishing. Um, this will definitely paint the most complete picture of these mats that have ever been painted, brand new information to science. But back to the conical stromatolites uh, being living models of these ancient microbial fossils, uh, such a detailed view into the communities also opens a vin window into microbial ecosystem and dynamics billions of years ago. And um, this will also be brand new, very interesting information. This is also an extreme environment and um, potential biosignature preservation and degradation over such huge time scales can make it a good astrobiological analog, giving us a blueprint on reconstructing communities from ancient evidence um, of them left behind if we discover such evidence on other worlds. Um, I wanna thank my advisor and everybody who supported me in the field and in the lab. And a huge thank you to all my funding sources. And also a huge thank you to all of you uh, for being here uh, with me.